Okay, hi everyone. I decided I'm going to do a real quick video on a quick overview of what a character sheet looks like. When you first get to a game, say somebody calls and says, Hey, we're going to play D&D. We've got characters built. All you have to do is show up. You're going to show up and they're going to have character sheets for you. Most likely printed out on paper because otherwise if you don't have an account, you have to have your own login and nobody's going to want to share that. So you're going to come in and there'll be stacks of paper in front of you. And they can be very daunting because there's a lot of information there. However, depending on what you're playing, you may only have a couple of sheets and you may have several <coughs> sheets. I'm just going to give you a quick overview and show you what one of my character sheets is, partly because it gets you familiar with the vernacular of the D&D universe. This is my character sheet for Ophelia Redstar. She's my paladin of the Raven Queen that I've been playing in a long campaign with some friends. And like I said, there's a lot of information here. This one is created on D&D Beyond, and there are very, a lot of different character sheet styles. But since she's 10th level, there's a lot of stuff she can do. So there are several pages, some of which are blank at the moment, of information. I really need to go fill those in. But today we'll look at this page in a minute and this page, mostly this page. This is the main part of your character sheet that you'll be looking at most of the time. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'll go fit to the width of the page so you can see. Over here is going to be your character name. Never fear if you have trouble finding a character name you like. They're fan go to fantasynamegenerators.com and they're as well as some other sites but they will help you come up with fantastic names or you can give yourself a name that's very simple that your dm will appreciate because she can keep up with it i mean they can keep up with it because i'm not talking about me at all there no okay this is your class and level class is what kind of what your character does a paladin for example is a fighter primarily who is working in service to a deity in my case the raven queen Level 10th, which means I've been playing her for a while. A paladin, by the way, can do magic as well. Most of their magic is adding bonuses to damage that they do. Race, she's human. I play humans a lot. Background. Background is mostly for character development. It also gives you potentially extra um, items, extra proficiencies, and extra languages, depending on what you choose. And you know, it's whatever goes the most with your character's story. Your name, of course, goes here. Your experience points, that's a lot. It takes a long time to get to that many. This side of the page, you're going to have your modifiers. Modifiers are numbers that you roll for. I forgot my computer is not a touch screen like the computers at work. They're based on strength, dexterity, constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. These are numbers you'll roll dice for. We'll do a quick video about how to do that later. But these numbers, you go to a chart and it tells you how, what each of these numbers, what the bonus is for them. And that's what's in the big number. Your DM during a game is going to tell you Say, make a strength check for me. Just a general strength check to see if you can pick something up. You're going to roll a d20, and you're going to add that number. However, sometimes it's a little more specific. The DM, maybe you want to pick up and throw a big rock. That's going to be more of an athletics check. So you're going to come to your athletics, whichever the DM tells you. They may say strength. If they say strength, go over here. If they say athletics, come over here. And you'll notice these are in alphabetical order. So they should be easy to find. So I roll a d20 and I get to add a 7 because I'm proficient in it, which I'll explain here in a minute, actually right here. As you level up, your proficiency bonus gets higher. At 10th level, it's plus 4. So anything my character is proficient in, I get to add that to the modifier. All of these skills are based on a modifier, which are listed to the side. For example, dex, it's dexterity, so it's whatever my dexterity modifier is, which is a plus two, because that's my dexterity. 
See, wisdom. It's plus zero. So I don't add anything. However, this is why this part of the form is important. A lot of people will tell you, well, just go add your modifier plus your proficiency bonus. This, this is here so you don't have to math during the game. If they say performance, as long as you've updated your character sheet correctly, you go to performance. It's plus three. Nature check, it's going to be plus zero. Some people like to do the math separately, but it's just confusing, and that's why this character sheet's here. Now, mind you, the skills, the items in this bottom square here, are things you're going to do. You, right there. What your character's doing. Now, up here, these are saving throws. Saving throws are a little different. These are for what people are going to do things to you. You know, what you're going to do to them, but what they're going to do to you. Say a wizard's going to cast a spell on you, and you have to make a wisdom saving throw. So if it's been cast at Ophelia, she's going to roll her d20 and add 7. If it's charisma-based, she's going to so saving throw. I get to add 10, which is really good because she has high charisma. She's pretty badass. Okay. We're going to hop over here. Initiative is plus two. Initiative is based on your dexterity. What this is, is when you're going into battle, you roll a die to see who gets to go in what, or what order you're going to go in. Whoever has the highest initiative gets to go first. And it goes from the highest to lowest, including the bad guys. Your initiative is whatever dexterity modifier is. And there are some weapons and special magic items that are going to give you a bonus to your initiative. So anytime I roll a d20 and add the two, and that's my number for initiative order. AC, that's my armor class. That's how high a creature's gonna have to roll to hit me. Well, me, not you, you, me. On another character sheet, say, I'm trying to attack a creature that has an AC of 15, and I roll 18. Yes, I hit him. I roll a 14, no, I don't hit them. Defenses, these are just things to keep in mind. Like, for example, as a paladin, I become immune to disease and immune to being frightened. Inspiration is something the DM can give you or a bard, but that's for later. Let's see. 78 hit points is how many hit points I have. So that's how many points of life I have, basically. Whenever a creature does manage to hit the AC or higher, I'm going to take damage off of there. When I hit zero, well, we'll talk about that later. Hit dice. At each level, you get one more hit dice. So in game, if we take a short rest, I have up to 10d10 that I can roll to get those hit points back on a rest. It can be very helpful. These are your life and death saving throws, which we'll get to cover later. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. This area, these are things that I am proficient with. I am proficient with heavy armor, light armor, medium armor, and shields, martial weapons, and simple weapons. These are based off of my class. Paladins and fighters are pretty well uh, proficient in all weapons. These are the languages that I speak. Common refers to the language that almost all creatures speak in the D&D universe. All regular characters do. Infernal is demon-based. She has a friend named Grixorian game that Jerry plays that she's learning. She's decided she's learned her Infernal from her, probably. Come on. There we go. Over here, this corner is really more for the DM, not for you. These are numbers. She, she, I'm not really alert around me, apparently, because I'm usually too busy wagging my finger telling people, you really shouldn't have done that, but only in a you're going to get us caught sort of way, and I don't want to deal with that kind of trouble day, not it's morally wrong. Passive wisdom means what you can, what you're aware of around you. Pet insight is, what I know that is about that person's lying, or are they really feeling sad? Passive investigation is just kind of what I would find rummaging around naturally. I have these are the different actions I can do. These are different things I can do for bonus actions. And these are my weapons. Well, it's most of them. 
Now this is another area where if your sheet's filled out correctly, it makes battle so much easier. Because literally, I'm going to attack with my dagger, roll a d20, I add a 7. Okay, I add a 7 for any of my weapons. Roll a d20, if I hit, I come over here, I see I'm going to roll a d4, and add 3 points to whatever I roll with that d4. So example, I roll a 4, I get 7 points of piercing damage. And it's important to always tell your DM what kind of damage it is, because sometimes the damage is going to be a little different than for certain creatures. That they might be resistant or they might be vulnerable to that kind of damage. This information over here is for a little later. We'll cut you something over weapons, but it'll, it'll explain that a little more as we go on. And then one more quick little thing. We're going to go down to our spell page. Oh, well, there's more of our information about our actions. This is our equipment. This is how much gold I have. What I'm carrying. What I carry to be encumbered. I have a lot of stuff. I don't carry all of it at once, though. Do, 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 do. And this is my spell page of what spells I have available for me. I can only choose so many a day. These are just all of them I can choose from. So my spell class, spell casting class is Paladin. So my spell casting ability is based off my charisma. Spell save DC is a number that you cast. If you're say you're throw casting a spell and stuff is going to fall, so the player needs to make a dexterity saving throw. It'll show on your spell card. You're going to come, for example, over here, if I cast Bane, it's a charisma saving throw. So it's going to be, you'll have to make a roll at least a 15 to save from it. Some spells are going to be attack spells, which I don't know if I have. As, as a paladin, I don't have many of those. If I'm going, but if I do have one I'm going to cast where it's going to be a ranged attack or melee attack, it'll say on the spell. I'm going to roll a d20 and add that 7. So I basically roll set, add 7 to anything I roll for any kind of attack. But that's a quick overview of what a character sheet looks like. Yeah, it's a little complicated, but if you have your sheet there and it's properly filled out, it's pretty, pretty simple to figure out if you just remember... These are what things are what you roll when people are trying to do things to you. These are things you're trying to do. These are attacks. Basically how fast you get to go in action, how hard you are to hit, how many how much life you have to take away. Extra points during the day, proficiencies in your walk, last of all your walking speed. That means 30 feet. So I can go 30 feet on one turn in combat, which on a map is going to be five, um, six one-inch squares. But 30 feet. So like a gnome, it's going to be 25. Some creatures, it's longer. Some classes, it's longer. I believe a monk has a longer walking speed. Anyway, I'm going to stop there for now. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.